Hi guys, it's Mark Zickby, Mr. Sci-Fi, also knows Mark Zickby of Space Command. And um, a lot is going on, a lot is going on. Uh, first of all, I got these two cool books in the mail the other day. And uh, they're fantastic fictioneers, A History of the Incredible, by P edited, compiled, edited, and illustrated by Pete Von Schaley. And uh, they basically go over like all these characters from uh, the literature of the fantastic and so on and so forth, anyone who's a luminary, including Gene Roddenberry. And if you notice, the Remembrance of Gene Roddenberry is written by Mark Zickery. Yay! So it's uh, pretty cool. I have uh, another, another uh, entry to my name. So if you are curious to read about what I wrote about Gene Roddenberry and also what other people have written about, people have written about all sorts of folks from the world of the fantastic. Um, you can check these out again. Fantastic Fictioneers, Pete Von Schaley. Good job, Pete. And uh, really fun to be included in this. Uh, meantime, we're uh, very, very busy. The, you know, some of you know, many of you know, that I just wrote a pilot for the CW called The Theurgist. And uh, this week, the president of the network is reading it. And we'll see what happens. It could be anything from um, thanks but no thanks to uh, making the pilot, making the show, any number of things. So I'll, I'll let you know how it goes. Additionally, I've finished a draft of the outline on Sweet Haven with Rock Neil Bannon, who is currently executive producer of Evil on CBS and created Farscape and Defiance and many other shows. He loves the outline. So we're going to then jump in and uh, write the script. So more to come on that. Lots of cool people involved that you will, I'm sure, be thrilled to see in this in this great show to come. And meantime, with Space Command, Space Command, uh, we've rented the physical studio again. So we've moved the Paladin sets and the cave sets to um, to our studio. We're going to be moving the alien hibernation ship that um, our wonderful Eric Rodriguez is building and the creatures that he's building to our studio, as well as the sets and spacesuits from Cloverfield that we'll be redressing to use in our show. So many, many, many cool things to come. Uh, and we're also building the futuristic car that we're going to see in, in Space Command very shortly. So um, it's a dream come true. If you want to enter the spacesuit contest, uh, there are many cool things around that. We're going to be having the Space Command uh, convention coming soon, the screening coming soon. We're recording the radio play in a couple weeks, which is the prequel where issue number two of the comic will be coming out shortly. Just a lot of stuff. The novel is coming out. So um, uh, watch this space. Uh, and thanks so much. Ben, you can buy Space Command shares for 7500 bucks each. It will help me cover the rent. It will help us roll camera. We want to be shooting in January and finish the rest of Forgiveness, uh, the two-hour second, um, second story in Space Command. And we're about ready to ship the first hour and launch the web, the web series. So tons of stuff coming, guys. And you'll love, I think, all of it. So, um, but... But And so you can buy shares in Space Command, you can go to our GoFundMe campaign or our Patreon campaign. If you like what I'm doing here, if you're, you're enjoying Space Command, please send some bucks our way because otherwise it all grinds to a halt. Uh, and we don't want that, do we? So now what I'm going to talk about is Watchmen. And this is a very interesting subject. Many of you know that the new series created by Damon Lindelof has been airing on um, HBO, and I've been watching it. But let, let's start at the beginning, and I'll walk you through this. It's a very, very, very interesting history, and one that uh, has many interesting twists and turns. So here we go. So this is the graphic novel of Watchmen that came out in 1987. It was, it was published initially as comic books by DC uh, in uh, 1986 and 87. It was uh, written by Alan Moore and illustrated by Dave Gibbons, and John Higgins was the colorist. And it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful graphic novel. It's wonderful. When I was executive story editor on Beyond Reality, uh, my bosses were Richard Manning and Hans Beimler, whom, with whom I worked also on Star Trek The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine and, uh, and Tech War, for that matter. And, um, and, and Ricky mentioned Watchmen to me at that time. This was in the uh, 1990s. And so on his say-so, I went and I bought it and I read it and I thought it was absolutely terrific. And so, and, and when it was named one of the 100 greatest novels of all time, uh, I wasn't surprised. It really began graphic novels in earnest. And now we're doing the Space Command graphic novel, and it's uh, largely thanks to this that showed me the possibilities of what can be done in this, in this world of comic books. Because I grew up in the Silver Age of comics, reading Green Lantern and Superman and Batman and Magnus Robot Fighter, etc. Loved comics, 
But this was another level. This was truly another level. And I also read the Robert Crumb comics and the, all the underground comics that came out in the 60s and beyond. And so I saw the two poles of uh, what were possible in comics, but then this really kind of united it. Uh, it was about superheroes, but, but it was also about sex and death and all sorts of things. It went very, very deep. And it, it was basically an alternate parallel Earth set in the 1980s. Nixon, I think, was on his fourth term. And it was just wonderfully realized. And, uh, and I thought it was terrific. And I've read it a number of times. And uh, then, I, and, I, and Alan Moore was sort of the wild man of comics. He has long hair. He's, he's you know, a very strange guy. And, um, and he also has done other, other titles that I've read and very much enjoyed. And Dave Gibbons I had known previous to this because he was the illustrator on the Doctor Who uh, comic magazine. And uh, during the Tom Baker years, and I was a big fan of Tom Baker and read those and collected those. So, so this was um, very talented men working on this. So, but then I found out, excuse me, <coughs> sneezing. Uh, I found out the history of this, which was fascinating, which was that originally Alan Moore was going to write this about the Charles, the Charlton characters that DC had acquired. Charlton was a, a comic book publisher uh, in the 50s and, and 60s primarily where they did a number of superhero comics and other kinds of comics as well. But the brilliant Steve Ditko, who uh, was one, one of the principal artists, the first artist on, on Spider-Man and, and, and also Doctor Strange, co-creator of Doctor Strange, or you could even say creator of Doctor Strange, just amazing talent. Uh, he drew in the 50s, he drew a, a comic book character called uh, Captain, Captain Adam, who was an irradiated character who had atomic powers. And, uh, and they also had a character called the Blue Beetle. There were a number of these characters. And originally Watchmen was going to be about those characters. DC was bringing them back. And uh, he started working out what he would do with these characters. And then DC, uh, Dick, Dick Giordano, the uh, editor at DC, decided not to uh, give them to Alan Moore because they, Alan Moore would basically take them in directions that you couldn't backtrack from. And uh, so instead he said, create your original character. So basically what Alan Moore did was he created variants of the characters he'd been thinking of. So instead of Captain Adam, you had Dr. Manhattan, who was also irradiated and had amazing powers. And instead of Blue Beetle, you had Night Owl, who was sort of a conflation of Blue Beetle and Batman. And uh, you also had the comedian, who was sort of this crazy vigilante character. And you had um, Silk, Silk Stocking, who was uh, this sort of um, sexy female character. And you had... Uh, uh, Rorschach. Now, Rorschach was interesting because he was he wore a mask that looked like Rorschach blot. He's the most interesting character probably in Watchmen, and he has a very black and white way of seeing things. He's very, very violent and very. Uh, he doesn't uh, believe in compromise at all, and and Alan Moore basically based him on Steve Ditko because Steve Ditko. The reason Steve Ditko and and Stan Lee came to a falling out and uh, parted ways was because Steve Ditko would not compromise on his vision of Spider-Man. And, and Stan Lee wanted to, to do certain things that uh, Steve Ditko didn't agree with, and so Steve Ditko departed the field. And he later created a character named uh, uh, Mr. A, who was, again, very much dealing with objectivism, which was this belief system that Steve Ditko had that um, uh, showed up in his work. And again, it was very black and white, good and evil. That was it. No gray, no gray. And so Rorschach um, gets that same quality of um, extremism. And uh, so, it, so, so this was all in Watchmen. And, and he also had this um, comic book that people were reading within the comic that was sort of this pirate story. And it's just amazing stuff that happens in this, in this comic. And, uh, you know, I highly recommend it if you haven't read it. And there's all sorts of expanded editions and, and, and uh, you know, illuminated editions and so forth. But mostly, um, uh, Alan Moore, again, has proven as un uncompromising as his Rorschach character because when they decided to do a movie in 2009 and later a TV series in, the, in 2019, Alan Moore's name is nowhere to be seen because he disavows these film adaptations of his work. So in, 29, in 2009, Zack Snyder announced he was going to do Watchmen. And and he was it was and they've been trying to make Watchmen into a movie forever since the 1980s and been un, unsuccessful. Now I very much like Zack Snyder's version, and uh, <clears throat> I'll show you a couple things about that. So when the movie was coming out, they actually uh, 
came, um, released a uh, Blu-ray and DVD of the motion comic where they basically took Watchmen and gave it limited animation and had, had someone do the voices. Now, unfortunately, they had the male and female voices done by a male actor, which kind of makes it not as great to watch. They should have had a male and a female. But this is still very interesting if you want to see so, sort of a hybrid between the, the, the graphic novel and the movie. But at the same time, Zack Snyder came out with Watchmen, and I like it very much. I, it's a, I think it's an extremely good film. I like it better than his other superhero films, like the Superman films he's done and so forth, and Avengers. Uh, I think it's dark. I think it captures the tone of the, of the book. Um, it's got a really good cast. Uh, Malin Ackerman plays the girlfriend of Dr. Manhattan, who's also the daughter of Silk Stocking. Billy Crudup is Dr. Manhattan, um, a largely computer-generated character that's really interesting and very well realized. Matthew Good plays uh, 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 Adrian Veidt, who's also known as Oz Ozymandias. Uh, Jackie Earl Haley is brilliant, wonderful as Rorschach. He'd been a child actor, and this was really his breakthrough role as an adult. Just phenomenal, terrific. Patrick Wilson is Night Owl. He's been in many movies since. Uh, and Jeffrey Dean Morgan played the comedian. So it was, it's a really solid cast, and Zack Snyder did a great job directing it, and it's just very, very, very literal to the graphic novel, with one exception, which is the ending is different. The, the emotional through line of the ending is similar, and I won't spoil it, but it's an ending in the graphic novel that has been utilized now in Damon Lindelof's TV series, but was not utilized in the... Uh, in the in the movie and additionally the comic book within a comic was done as an animated um adventure within watchmen but that wasn't in the theatrical release and the ending of that too is very different from what's in the in the graphic novel so so for me watchmen really really does a great job i've watched it a number of times but there are many iterations of it and i wanted to tell you which one i would recommend so there's the theatrical version that came out in the movies and it was it was okay it wasn't bad then they came out with a director's cut and that's here's the director's cut with a lenticular cover so you can see it's kind of 3d even though the movie isn't and it and the director's cut is very good and um and there's lots of cool extras on this and you know it's 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 really fun and the director's cut is much better than the uh, theatrical cut but finally if you want to be totally insane there's the ultimate watchman the complete story and this includes the animated story Within, that was the comic book within a comic in the original graphic novel, and it's an animated story that's sort of like a comic book brought to life in this. And again, it doesn't work as well, that element doesn't work as well, because again, the point is lost, the ending is different. Um, now, my friend Brett Stimely played JFK in this, so he actually signed this copy to me, and uh, I'm going to have him in Space Command sooner or later, probably sooner. This is this is the cast of the, uh, the movie, so you can see them very... It's it's very well realized. It really it really looks like the, the the graphic novel and has a very similar sensibility. And the cast is uniformly good. And uh, but it's okay. So they so the movie came out. It was not hugely financially successful. It cost 130 million to make, and it grossed worldwide gross was around 185 million. So that didn't even break even really. But but I like it a lot. It really um, polarized the community. Some people loved it. Some people hated it. I'm much more toward the loved it side. And uh, and I remember seeing their, the Night Owl flies in this big, cool-looking vehicle, and, I, and they actually had that actual vehicle at Comic Con the year the movie came out. So uh, so it was a lot of fun. And uh, but now, ten years later, my friend Damon Lindelof decides to do Watchmen for HBO, and it's very interesting because the movie Watchmen, even though it was made in two thousand nine, was set in the nineteen eighties and at the same time frame as the graphic novel, and it had Nixon and it had Kennedy and it had all these characters of that era, Andy Warhol and Truman Capote and and um you know and Lee Iacocca and it summoned the eighties but in it's a parallel universe it's a different timeline and um the so Watchmen continues the timeline of the graphic novel to now twenty nineteen and it deals and it takes a long time to kind of get into it. It takes a long time to know who you're supposed to like and, uh, you know, and take the journey with. And I had a hard time, very hard time getting into it. I've watched all six episodes now. It's a nine-episode season. And But for, first of all, from a production standpoint, it's terrific. It's got great visuals, great design. Um, you can't fault it in any way there. The writing is solid and sharp. Um, it's, 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 a, it's an extremely challenging show, but in a good way. 
and the cast is very interesting. It stars Regina King, uh, and, you know, from If Beale Street Could Talk, Tim Blake Nelson, whom I've loved ever since he was in Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, the great Coen Brothers movie, and he's terrific in this. He's been terrific in everything I've ever seen him in, but he's really good in, in, in Watchmen. Uh, Jeremy Irons plays the, the an older version of the Adrian Veidt character that, that uh, was played by Matthew Good in the feature. Uh, in a way, it's almost like a like a, a son of the feature, but it's more directly a son, a child of the graphic novel. Now, again, Alan Moore has disavowed all of these different versions, and so his name is nowhere to be seen. Dave Gibbon, Gibbons is listed, the the artist, and um, and and he's also a producer on on this version on the TV shows, all to the good. And uh, and then we also have Gene Smart playing the later iteration of, of Silk Stocking, the daughter. Uh, who was the girlfriend of Dr. Manhattan. Now she's older, she's an FBI agent, and Luce Gossett Jr. plays a character, and he's sort of mysterious at first, and then we learn more about his history. It's much more about racial issues than the original Watchmen was. It deals with the Tulsa riots, which uh, in the, from the 1920s that really did happen, uh, a very dark, dark uh, stage of our history, the Ku Klux, Ku Klux Klan, all of that. Uh, it's got more racial diversity than, than the original Watchmen did. Uh, or the movie, and uh, and this is all to the good. But again, it takes you really have to be willing to go where it takes you because it's not it's not trying to be your friend. <laughs> I'll, I'll say that. And uh, but the cast again is extremely good. It's extremely interesting. It, it's grown on me, and so I'll see where the remaining three episodes go. Uh, I can recommend the show. I think it's worth watching. And uh, but 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 all of this stuff. Watchmen is a fascinating. Um, storyline. In more recent years, uh, DC brought the characters back. I haven't read those stories. Uh, J. Michael Straczynski, Joe Straczynski, whom I've worked with, of course, on Babylon 5 and Real Ghostbusters, <clears throat> and who also, you know, I helped start in, you know, in the, in the, in the business with Captain Power. Um, uh, he was one of the writers on it. He's a big, big um, writer in comics now. But, um, but I can't speak to those. I don't know if they were great or, you know, etc. But I can speak to everything I've been talking about here. So I think your time will be well spent with all of these iterations of Watchmen. Um, and, uh, you know, you'll find it a fascinating exploration. It goes very, very deep into issues such as uh, nuclear annihilation, um, alienation, vigilantism, you know, whether superheroes are good guys or bad guys. It's, it's, it's a fascinating take. It's really, really, um, you know, a great, great piece of work. So that's about it for now. Um, you know, subscribe to Mr. Sci-Fi, ding the bell, uh, check out our previous videos. Um, uh, if you want to buy Sh Space Command shares, now is the moment. Now is the moment because they're 7500 bucks each. You get a percentage of my producer's net uh, royalties in the first um, four episodes of Space Command. Uh, we'll see what happens with CW. If, it if, if that becomes a series, Space Command will sell like that. And then we won't be selling shares anymore. So if you've been thinking about it, if you've been on the fence, uh, you can contact me at 323-363-1259 or email me at markzickery at gmail.com. Uh, you can also go on the GoFundMe campaign, throw some money our way. All of it's going to help. Um, I want to keep moving forward. <clears throat> and I think you're really going to love what you see. It's, uh, it's an amazing time. Uh, just thrilling. I mean, just to be building all this cool stuff to share with you in Space Command, but also to be creating, you know, six more series with the Showrunners Network and this theater just script that just fell into my lap. I just, amazing times. And I'm, I'm so thrilled also to be part of a community of science fiction, fantasy and horror novelists, TV show runners, directors, writers, all of this stuff. Because when I talk about Damon Lindelof, he's someone I know and we hang out and we talk and, um, it's it's really great and and it's wonderful that we are a community of like-minded souls and like-minded spirits because um Damon, you know, he's been following Space Command. He's a big Twilight Zone fan, so he's known in my work for a long long time. Uh you know, Ron Moore, George R. R. Martin. We these are all people we know, we work with, we 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 share each other's sensibility and and cheer each other on. And, you know, when you hear about Hollywood as cutthroat and, and doggy dog, it's really, there's that side of it, but I choose not to be part of that side of it. I choose to be part of the side where we create wonderful things, we work at the top of our game, and we, um, we change the world for the better. 
and uh, you know, it's uh, it's an honor to be part of it. I'm I'm thrilled to be in this life and in this world. So that's it for now. We'll be talking much more soon. And uh, you know, if you want to be part of Space Command, welcome aboard. Please do. If you want to build spacesuits, if you want to build robots or any of this stuff, you are welcome to. Uh, and that's about it for now. So much more to talk about soon. And have a happy Thanksgiving. Talk soon. Bye, guys.